This is rental car number 97, and today I'm driving the 2018 Nissan Maxima SV. This is a full-sized four-door sedan that retails for about $36,000. It's actually the eighth generation of the Maxima. They've been making these since 1981, almost as long as I have been alive, which is pretty impressive. All right, so let's jump right into it by popping the hood and taking a look at what's underneath. First off, you should note that this is a front-wheel drive car. It also has a CVT, or a continuously variable transmission, so you're not going to feel those gears shifting as you accelerate. Uh, you get a 3.5 liter V6 with this one. It's got horsepower of 300, which is pretty decent, and a 0-60 to 60 time of 5.7 seconds, which is pretty quick when you consider this is supposed to be a four-door family-style sedan. You also get a top speed of 133 miles an hour. I got nowhere near that. I topped out about 75 because, well, I'm afraid of speeding tickets. Anyway, when you put that all together, you get a pretty fun ride and some decent gas mileage. This one's going to get you 21 miles per gallon in the city, 30 on the highway with an 18-gallon uh, fuel tank. The only downside, though, is that Nissan recommends you put premium unleaded gas in the Maxima, which means you're going to pay, well, slightly more at the pump. All right, so that's a lot of stats. CVT, 3.5 liter V6, 300 horsepower, blah, blah, blah. What does that really mean in the real world? Well, at least in my opinion, the uh, Maxima is one of the most fun sedans that I have ever driven. It's fast, it's smooth, and the handling is exceptional. I know a lot of people aren't a big fans of the CVT. A lot of people do like to feel those gears shifting, but I like it. It's super smooth when you're accelerating onto the highway. And as I mentioned, the handling is just really nice. You don't feel like you're ever going to slip around the corners. In fact, I always feel like I can accelerate harder and faster, which is, uh, well, I admit it's a little bit dangerous. So this is my long-winded, inarticulate way of saying that the Maxima is a lot of fun to drive. You don't need to worry about performance. If you're even thinking about buying or renting a Maxima, I think you're going to like it. You won't be disappointed at all. All right, so that's my very quick take on performance. I'm kind of skipping a little bit here because I really want to show you the interior of this vehicle. I think Nissan has done a nice job, and there's quite a bit to talk about, so let's get right to it. Real quick, I just want to mention that the seats are electronically adjustable, including lumbar support. The seat belt height is also adjustable, so when you put that all together, it's pretty easy to get this car to be really comfortable. Moving on, here's the key fob. It's a nice oval shape with five buttons on the front. That top button you see with an arrow and a circle, that's the remote start feature. That's really helpful when it gets cold outside. Um, this key fob works great. Really, there's no problems with it. I just think it's a little bit light for my taste, and it's made out of kind of cheap-feeling plastic, so it's not my favorite out there. But honestly, there's nothing majorly wrong with this one. And because there's no physical key, you get a push-button start. It's located right down here on the bottom of the dash behind the gear shift. It's just a circular button that you press once, and then when the car is on, it illuminates in a very faint red color. All right, now that we got the car on, we can take a look at the steering wheel setup. I do want to mention that this is wrapped in a nice soft leather, so it feels really good in your hands. There's also a number of buttons that I want to show you. First off, on the left-hand side, you get your volume rockers. Uh, and then also controls to play around with the digital display in the gauge cluster. There's also additional controls on the right side of the steering wheel. This is where you're going to find your cruise controls along with the buttons to interact with your cell phone. Now above the steering wheel in the gauge cluster is where I think things start to get interesting. I love the displays on Nissans. I think they have done a fantastic job. And I like how clean and crisp this whole gauge cluster looks. You have two big dials on the left and right hand side, and then a massive display in the center. This display is crisp, the colors are really nice, and it's super easy to view while you're driving, both during the day and at night. I gotta say I'm a big fan of this display. It's also chalked full of all kinds of options that you can look at about the car. So not only information about the vehicle, like you know how your tires inflated, but you can also play around with additional settings to turn on and off a bunch of features in the vehicle. It really is a nice display. All right, but enough of the gauge cluster. Let's shift our focus down and to the left to look at all the standard buttons you're gonna get over here. So you have your window controls, your door locks, your mirror controls. And then up on the dash, you have controls to adjust the brightness of the display and the gauge cluster. 
And then down below you have additional controls for the trunk release and to turn on and off traction control. And then all the way down on the floor by your foot, you also have a push pedal parking brake. All right, so let's shift our focus to the right of the steering wheel and up. Up here you're gonna find lights to illuminate the cabin. Not real bright lights, but uh, they seem to work okay. You also have simple controls to adjust whether or not the lights turn on when you open the doors along with a fairly sizable sunglass holder, and then a rear view mirror that includes uh, three buttons to control uh, garage doors, along with an automatic dimmer feature that has an on and off button. Below the rear view mirror on the center console, you have your large touch screen. I'm kind of torn about this one. I like that it's big, uh, but I'm not a big fan of how dull this display is. The colors just don't really pop that well. Also, really the only thing I care about when it comes to entertainment features on a vehicle is, is whether or not it's easy to connect my cell phone to it via Bluetooth, because I listen to a lot of podcasts and audiobooks. I, I always have trouble with Maximas and Altimas, and that my phone tends to cut in and out of the Bluetooth connection when I have Nissans. I'm not sure if it's just me and my cell phone, or, or maybe it's just a, a global problem, but that's what I've experienced so far. Otherwise, this display is, is fairly nice. I like that there are dedicated buttons on the left and right of the screen to help you navigate through all the uh, menu structures. Everything is organized really well. There's just not a whole lot of fun stuff here. So there's no Apple CarPlay or Google Play connectivity, and there's not a lot of apps loaded here. So although the display is big and nice, it's just not very fun. I do, however, have uh, more positive things to say about the climate controls. These are great. Big, easy buttons to use. I love that there are digital readouts for the temperature, both for you and your passenger. Everything works great. And honestly, I had no trouble getting the car to a comfortable temperature, even though it was about 95 outside. And I have the same positive things to say about the gear shift. It's wrapped in a nice leather, shifts through the gears really smoothly, and it includes sport shift capability, so you can adjust the gears manually if you choose to, just by popping the gear shift in drive mode slightly to the left and then shifting up and down. There's also a nice storage area in this location. Looks like it might be a converted uh, ashtray, but Anyway, it's fairly deep, so you can actually put a cell phone in there, and it includes two USB ports along with an auxiliary jack, all in a convenient spot because, you know, this is probably where you're going to keep your cell phone if you drive this vehicle for a long period of time. And then behind that storage area, behind those cup holders, you'll find a dial that you can use to interact with the uh, touchscreen that we talked about earlier. Uh, this is made out of nice materials, and it works fairly well. There's just not a whole lot of stuff for you to navigate through, so I didn't really find myself using this too much while I was driving the vehicle. What I did use a lot were the controls behind the dial that you can use to shift the car between normal and sport mode. You do get a nice sort of icon that pops up in the display in the gauge cluster to let you know you're in sport mode, and I definitely noticed a difference in the amount of, uh, well, the speed of the acceleration and kind of the handling. So I kept it on sport most of my drive just because it made the car that much more fun. Also down here you'll find your heated seat controls. These are kind of switches that click in with kind of a satisfying uh, sound when you press them. And then also in this location, I think I mentioned this before, but you do get two cup holders. They're a big size and, and can fit my oversized uh, iced tea. And then there is a center armrest that includes a storage area underneath. There's not a whole lot down here. But there is a power port that you will need an adapter for, but it's located in a pretty convenient spot, so uh, hopefully you can get some use out of it. There's also these weird notches located in here. I'm pretty sure they're for change. At least uh, it works, as you can see. But uh, it's kind of strange because it's not real convenient to get the coins in and out. And honestly, I don't see why you couldn't just throw them in a cup holder or down here in the storage area all by themselves. But, you know, little details like this are a nice touch. You also get a pretty large glove box uh, that goes back pretty deep in this car, so you can get plenty of odds and ends down in here. Thankfully, Enterprise was nice enough to keep an extra toll pass and some owner's manual materials in here for me, so that's always nice. All right, so that's all the major highlights of the front seat. Let's jump in the back seat together so I can show you the amenities that your passengers are going to get to enjoy. First off, legroom is abundant back here. I'm six feet tall. That driver's seat is pushed back a good distance, and I still have about eight inches of room between my knees and the back of that front seat. Uh, that's fantastic. Not a whole else back here. Um, the back of the center armrest doesn't have any power ports. It just has two dedicated vents for your passengers. The back of the seats do include this, uh, I'm never really sure what to call this, but I guess a folder, little uh, pocket 
Yeah, whatever. It's made out of leather from the seats, but really it doesn't feel very nice. Um, also, the car seat anchors back here are fairly shallow, so that's a positive. Uh, I have two small kids, so when I have to dig around for these car seat anchors, I get infuriated. But these are shallow enough where you can actually see them without manipulating the seats. So that's a, a big positive in my book. There's also a center armrest that folds down fairly easily and reveals two cup holders and then a small slot-like storage area that's probably perfect for a cell phone. All right, so let's close things out by popping open the trunk and taking a look at what kind of storage space you're going to get with the Maximum. You do get a pretty large area back here. It's in the form of a T because the wheel wells do kind of infringe on the space a little bit. I think you're not going to have any trouble hauling around suitcases or groceries or anything like that with this car. And thankfully, underneath the floor of this area, you do have a spare tire that's fairly easy to get access to. And then lastly, the rear seats do fold down. You just have to give a kind of a gentle tug on these two cords right here. And then uh, those seats fold down with all, almost no effort at all. And then you open up the space even more so that you can haul some larger items with the Maxima. All right, so that's pretty much it for the 2018 Nissan Maxima SV. I was lucky enough to have this car for three days. I think I put over 350 miles on it, so I spent a lot of time behind the wheel. And in that time, I really enjoyed it. This is a really nice sedan that drives well, has a lot of fun features to play around with. So given all that, I think I'm going to give this one four stars. Look, this is a great car, but just not quite perfect. I really wish they would work a little bit more on that center display to give some more tech-like toys to play with. But anyway, that's my take on this one. If you disagree, please leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you. Otherwise, that's it for now. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you join me next time when I review my 98th rental car. I'll see you then.